In a recent interview, J.J. Abrams admitted, as though none of us were aware, that he learned it's best to plan things out as best you can and respond to the unexpected. The unexpected probably being the passing of Carrie Fisher, who was to be a more central character in Episode 9, and the complications caused by the response to the pandemic. This is all fine and well, but it's unfortunate that it took anyone from Disney until 2021, that's six years since their purchase of Lucasfilm, to say that their mock Star Wars movies were aimless. This isn't surprising, since we can't expect Disney's employees to publicly say what we all think, but it comes as a sour note cementing the narrative legacy of their Star Wars movies, or lack thereof. This is the fatal flaw in Disney Star Wars. We don't even have to touch the foreign political injections into the franchise to see that the Star Wars narrative, the very core, is broken. Why even talk about social justice wars when the very story of the movies don't even work? It's like getting on a plane and complaining about the food when the plane doesn't even fly. It's well known that George Lucas had outlines for a sequel trilogy. Given George's reputation with the prequels and special editions, it's at least understandable why Disney chose to go in a different direction. However, there is absolutely no excuse as to why, given the rich expanded universe available, J.J. Abrams, Kathleen Kennedy, and the rest of Disney's Lucasfilm had no plan as to how their multi-billion dollar movie franchise would pan out. We all remember the headlines about Kathleen Kennedy saying that there was no source material available like there was for the Marvel movies. This just adds to that absurdity. Star Wars is a rich environment for storytelling, as the expanded universe proved. What does it say about the owners of Star Wars when they were sitting in arguably the richest and most fertile storytelling soil, then poured salt all over that soil, and then replaced it with recycled story beats, shallow lore, and aimless meandering. Then, when they get criticized, they offer up a pathetic platitude about strong female characters. It's absolutely telling that the sequel trilogy makers would rather shield their failure in virtue then realize their cinematic vandalism. It's clear that Disney just wanted to make three movies and call that a trilogy. Never mind Hollywood's propensity for making god-awful sequels titled something like Movie Franchise, The Fall of the Beginning of the Rise of the Return of the Resurrection of the Main Character. Maybe we don't see as many sequels from as many movie series anymore, but when there are sequels, we better get ready for 10. Disney's writers had no real concept of what a trilogy is, at least in the context of Star Wars. A trilogy is defined as a series of novels, movies, etc. that are closely related and involve the same characters or themes. Disney's writers were smart enough to at least have the same characters across three movies, for the most part. However, Disney Star Wars as a whole had no real concrete theme. Sadly, The Last Jedi probably had more of a theme than the rest of the movies. A theme is an intentional concept or idea, often two or more conflicting ideas that present the thematic question of a story. Different characters align and relate to each other along thematic lines differently. Movies can even have multiple themes or interpretations of those themes. For example, in Episode 4, A New Hope, there was a thematic question. Which is better, faith or technology? The protagonist, Luke Skywalker, is at the center of all this and has yet to answer that question. However, there are characters like Obi-Wan who strongly say that faith is better. Han Solo would say that technology is better, though finds a little faith by the end. R2-D2 though being a product of technology, has faith in his friends. In contrast, 
C-3PO, also being a product of technology, has very little faith. Darth Vader would say that even though faith is very powerful, technology is what keeps him alive. Not to mention he works at the Death Star, which is a big ball of technology. Governor Tarkin has zero faith, never acquires it, and dies in a ball of technology. We can analyze and understand all the characters in A New Hope along these strong and discernible thematic lines. By the end of the movie, and of the trilogy, Luke Skywalker answers this thematic question. He becomes a powerful Jedi and brings the end to the technological, faithless empire. Star Wars is about good versus evil, yes. But more specifically, there is a struggle between faith and technology that is reflected in the old Jedi religion central to Star Wars. Given this rich thematic landscape of the original trilogy, what exactly is Disney Star Wars about? What is the theme? What was meant to be the thematic question? Beyond references to original Star Wars and poor mockery of it, there isn't one. If there is no strong thematic question, there is no dramatic glue to keep three movies together. Disney just wanted to make episodic feature-length films and then tie them in later like the Marvel movies for maximum profit. The problem with that is Disney's Marvel movies are largely forgettable. It makes sense that they made highly forgettable Star Wars movies. For those who remember, and for those who will never forget, to preserve the legacy of that galaxy far, far away, we ought to let it die in peace and hope for a day of resurrection, not vanity.